Today, we are going to talk about, uh, as we work our way through our Django certification, we are going to talk about uh, data types, uh, particularly numeric types. And those are going to be things like uh, integers and floats and scientific notation and good stuff like that. Now, uh, going back to our interpreter, we can play around a little bit. So if we do uh, x equals 3, we can also do y equals 3.4. So 3, we get an integer. No, we can do a uh, 3.4. We can do uh, z equals true. And uh, let's go do a equals um, 2. And we're going to do it uh, scientific notation, uh, which is our other type which is a, um, uh, here we go. So scientific notation, uh, make sure I get it right. I don't use it very often. So it's an exponent. Oh, so if I do that to the like uh, ninth power, eh, sure, we'll do that. I could do to the negative. Uh, well, let's do that. So A equals that and B equals 3.14. Did I get that right? I think I did that wrong, but that's okay. So to the negative nine, and that one is actually to the ninth. I'm sorry. So a little bit of typo there. So if I print A, see so you now this is um, scientific notation is just basically this means times uh, ten to the ninth. So it's basically adding nine decimals, uh, pushing it over to the right, adding nine decimals to it so we get this huge number uh, if we use the smaller one where it goes the other way so negatives go to the left positives go to the right we're going to see that this is oh and it's actually going to print it out it's not going to do the uh, zero 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 i think if we do a equals like negative four let's see what it does there yeah so it's there's a certain point where it's going to actually go to scientific notation because it's just a pain but if we look for uh if we do x y and z uh, we can see and note that true and false are capital t or capital f and we can actually do type so we can see what these are so if i do type of a that's a float uh, even though oh yes because it is scientific notation b is also going to be a float uh, c if i do x that's going to be an int because it's going to take the one that makes the most sense y it's going to be a float because it has that decimal and then if we do Z, we're going to see that that is a Boolean. And we can add these together. So if we do, uh, let's do type of A plus B, which is going to be, uh, going back here. I'm sorry, not A plus B. Let's do X plus Y. X plus Y, which is going to be 3 plus 3.4, 6.4, and it's going to be a float because it's going to convert it out to what it needs to. If I were to add to uh, do two integers, so like I can also convert. So if I do that, now it's going to be an int. And if I do, because it's adding those two ints, and now we're going to see that it converted it to that 3.4, uh, converted it just to 3, and gets us an int. And so really the things you probably want to do is note that, uh, remember how to do the scientific notation. Uh, the rest of it you probably are good with, uh, but note that, for example, Booleans are clay, uh, case sensitive. And uh, I'm, I'm, you can find some stuff like numbers in Python, uh, this little link to find just how to get stuff together. There are some complex things that are out there. Um, so if I were to do... Uh, a equals 5x. Oh, it doesn't like that. Uh, oh, because it's got to be a string. And then it's going to be, uh, actually it's going to be a string. So that's interesting. It doesn't like that. So if I do type of 5x, it doesn't like that. Oh, because it's got to be j, I bet. There we go. If you want to do a complex number, then you got to use J in there. Uh, basically, also you can use imaginary or uh, J to make it one. So it can actually be, so if I do A5J, 
Oh, doesn't like that. It does have to have it. Yeah, so it doesn't like that. Um, but you can play around with your complex numbers. I'm not sure how often you're going to deal with those. Uh, but again, it's just really because it does show up on our uh, our types. And of course, uh, strings. So you can either slap double quotes or single quotes, and you're going to be a, a string. Note that, because um, you probably will see this, something like this on the test. So if I do A equals 1, B equals 2, and then I do print, well, let's just do A plus, yeah, let's do print uh, A plus B, it's going to be 3. But if I do uh, A equals a string of 1 and B equals the string 2, and then I do print A, print A, huh? there we go, print A plus B. Note it combine it concatenates those strings. I can't do minus on strings, so that's at least going to tell me I have to do that it doesn't support minus for strings. Whereas uh, before, if I go back to A equals 1 and B equals 2 and their numbers, now it's going to be negative 1. And if I, I'm going to have an issue, so let's say I do A equals 1, B equals the string 2, and then I print A plus B. In that case, we're going to see here that's going to tell us, hey, one's a string and one's an integer. That I don't support that. That doesn't work. So you're going to have to cast those out. And we have seen that in some of the code we've used in the past. So I just wanted to make sure I you know, brought that forward, that those are some of the types that we're working with. Now, another one that you're going to run into, uh, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but generally speaking, is uh, operator precedence. So you're going to see things like if you are given, oh, let me jump over here real quick. So there's going to be things like if I do x equals uh, 1 plus 3 times 5 minus 6 divided by 3 plus 9 times 6 that's in parentheses, they may say, okay, well, what is x equal to? And this is going to do uh, basic, uh, what I think is sort of standard precedence. So you start with parentheses, and so which that would be uh, nine times six is fifty-four. So let's we'll back this up a little bit. Um, we're going to simplify this sort of as we go. So you start with the parentheses, and then um, you work your way into brackets, which makes sense because if you had like a, an array, um, so let's say y equals uh, there's some sort of array one comma two comma three, and you wanted to get the item in uh, the first index or uh, it could be the you know three minus two index you want it you have to make sure that obviously you evaluate that to get to that index so brackets are going to take precedence precedence if you get in here uh, i don't know if that's going to run into it more more often you're going to see something like this so then we do left to right and we do uh, multiplication and division so we're going to see here, so we got our 54, but then we've got, so we do 1 plus, uh, and so it's going to be 3 times 5 is first. So it's going to do 15. And then there's a minus 6 divided by 3. And then there's a plus. So we get this, and then we just go left to right. So we're going to do uh, 16 minus 2 plus 54. 16 minus 2 is 14 plus 54, and so that's going to get us to 68. And if I do this, oh, and this is where you can uh, play around with it in the interpreter. There we go, so it's 68. And note that I get this, uh, which is a sort of good thing to note at times. Because I did this division, it turns it into uh, a float. If I didn't have that, so let's say I take that same thing and I just do instead of 6 divided by 3, um, I'm just going to make that 
let's just say I'm going to just switch it over. So it's just going to be one plus one. So that I don't have, well, let's just do one times two. So now, because I didn't have any division in there, and these are all integers, then it's going to be an integer. But if a division is automatically going to push it into a float. So some of those kinds of automatic um, conversions are very good to know. And then note that you're going to get down into, this is going to be pretty important um, also as you get into, we're going to talk probably a little later. Uh, we actually definitely are going to talk a little later about some of our uh, positives and negatives uh, and bitwise kinds of shifts and ands and ors, which becomes its own little thing uh, is good to know. Probably not getting a lot, get a lot of questions on that directly. Uh, we will have a couple on bitwise shifts, I think, and ands and ors. Uh, we will also get, obviously go very heavily into Boolean uh, ands and nots and ors. So we will talk about that as we go further along. Uh, I will throw this link out in the notes because uh, it's just a good one to look at. Or you can, you know, you could probably Google or your favorite search engine, Python operator precedents, and you're going to be able to see those there. That being said, I think it's a good time to wrap this one up. So uh, we will get out there and get to it. You guys go out and have a great day, great week, and we will talk to you next time. <music>